Hey guys, Sebchuf here. Hope you're all having an awesome day. Today for you, I have a new player tier list. I did make one of these a while ago, about three years ago, but it's super outdated because of so many changes to the game, and I made some important realizations that impact the list a lot. Like for example, in that list I talked a lot about a character's max stats, when a new player is probably lucky to even get a few stats maxed. Before we get into the list, we need to establish some important assumptions for a new player. One, being what we just mentioned, a new player would be lucky to consistently max free stats, so we're going to mainly be looking at base level 20 stats of classes. And even if you're an endgame player, you'll find the differences between level 20 stats of the different classes to be pretty interesting. Number two, a new player would have a bad pet, if any at all. They're still yet to see my pet guide. Three, a new player lacks experience. Don't expect them to do O3 right away, and because of that, range is super useful. For a new player would primarily be doing early game dungeons, godlands dungeons, and oryx and events. Number five, a new player would not have every item in the game, or even access to gear that makes a class special, but they can get the easier to get UTs that can make a class powerful, which we'll talk about later. Also for the tier list, ST is for classes that are OP for beginners, A T is for the ones that I would say are great, B are good classes for beginners in my opinion, C is just mech, and D is bad, stay away. Remember this is all opinions, so don't hate me too much, but I did put a lot of thought and effort into making this list. Let's get started shall we, with the D tier, the bad tier, with the 18th class. And it's the Huntress. Sorry if you like Huntress. There's gotta be at least one of you, right? Sure, Huntress has piercing, which can be nice, especially in the early game, but it has so many problems compared to other classes. Firstly, let's talk about the weapon that it uses, the bow. Bows do decent damage if you do hit all three shots. Like, Huntress actually ranks around the fifth best class at level 20 with an average set, but that's the issue. Hitting all three shots is tough. You have to be at most four tiles away to hit them all which is basically the same range as the first top 3 classes in DPS on the list, the melees, which are also better suited at being so close because they're tankier, because of their heavy armor. Huntress is a uh, middle of the range tankiness at best. Now with bows, you can hit targets up to 7 towers away with just the middle shots, but then you're roughly doing 40% less damage, and at that point, you're doing the least damage out of any class in the game with the same set. And keep in mind, on this DPS graph I gave all classes a T10 weapon, T4 ability, and T11 armor, without drinking any stat potions. There is a way to fix this problem for bow classes though. If you do farm a rare drop from the undead lair called the Doom Bow, it's a weapon that concentrates all of its damage into one singular shot, the middle shot. And on paper, it does quite similar damage to T10 bow, but in practice it does way more because you don't have to be constantly in the enemy's face to be hitting three different shots. Oh yeah, and the ability is just so annoying and clunky to use. Might be a bit too annoying for a beginner, and slow in the early game doesn't actually do too much compared to what some other bow classes can do with their abilities, which we'll talk about later. Oh yeah, and the class only does have 21 vitality, so the regening is so slow. Next, we have another annoying class to use. Can you guess it? It is the Samurai. Samurais use a wacky, which is basically just converting your mana into damage which newer players can't take much advantage of because they have a worse pet and less stats in general, and it also just sucks to use, it's so gross. The endgame wackies can be cool because some shoot forward and some even auto aim, but the tiered wackies are just, yeah. How it exactly works is it shoots past your face basically at a close range. You can't use it when you're sitting against a wall because I think it spawns in the wall and it's easy to miss on moving targets because you got to predict where they're moving. I prefer using the Huntress ability over this one when I'm playing Petless because to be honest, at least the Huntress ability has some utility through slowing. Samurai's ability does expose at higher tiers and what that does, it's a debuff that reduces enemy defense by 20, which is pretty cool, but it's not really relevant for a new player. This class ranks in at third worst DPS class in the game with a tier 10 set and it's slow and has low range. At the very least, it has great survivability to make up for all these faults. It ties in first place for having the highest base vitality stuff, and it uses heavy armor, which gives you more defense, which makes this seem like a slightly better option than Huntress for a beginner, but they're both gross. So let's move on. Okay, so that was the worst of the worst. Now we're moving up to the C tier, which are the mech classes. And now we have the 16th class, the mist 
Fantastic. Okay, this class is really lucky to not be in the bad tier, because it has yet another annoying ability. This ability has two radial effects around your cursor when you press space. Within the center, enemies get stasis, which will basically never benefit a new player, it should just be very annoying, and you'll be doing it by accident a lot as a beginner. But the only reason why you will be doing it by accident is because the ability has another effect further around this cursor, where enemies get cursed, which increases damage dealt to them by 25%. Now Mystic is the 6th worst damage class and quickly decreases to becoming the 2nd worst on enemies with at least 20 defense, which is just horrible. But at least with your curse the class becomes the 5th highest damage class, but quickly drops down to the 8th highest out of 18. And you'll be able to keep an enemy cursed for at least 16 seconds before running out of mana if you do hit it properly. A better reason why this class made it out of the bad tier is because of its great range with its staff being 8.5 tiles, which is really useful for new players. Just make sure to keep your maximum range because since the class uses a robe and is the first on the tier list to do so, it is super squishy and the class has very low speed so it's super immobile, so you're basically just a sitting duck to chasing enemies. On top of all this, it has a low vitality stat so you're gonna be sitting around a long time waiting for your health to come back. So yeah, it's basically just the range carrying this class. Next up, we have the Trickster. Now this is proof that this tier list is not biased because this is my favourite class, but it doesn't require a lot of knowledge to use the ability properly, otherwise you as a new player might find it useless or annoying. It's my favourite class in the game because I like to rush and it does it the fastest, but it would be crazy if a beginner knew how to rush, because you need to know the dungeons pretty well, and by the time you do learn how to rush, you're definitely at least a mid-game player. The other use for it is for decoying enemies, which is a bit tough because to do that you have to walk in a direction and then use your ability anywhere, and in that direction that you were walking, a decoy gets sent out, which instead gets attacked by enemies if it's the closer target. But this isn't too useful for early game enemies, especially with the lower tier decoys that don't last as long, and it's really tough to do. You're better off sticking with the T0 ability for very cheap jumps. The one use that I can imagine the prism having for a beginner is that doing sprite worlds is super quick, you can jump over the gaps, instead of having to go around clear enemies and rage at the conveyor belts. But that's enough smack talk about the class, the reason why I put this class here and not at the very bottom is because Trickster for some reason has really solid stats. It does around 15% more damage than the other dagger classes and has a really high base speed, but it does have low vitch. Even though I love a Trickster, probably look towards playing one of the other dagger classes if you're new to the game. Okay, now it's time for the B tier. It's at least good classes from here on out. And the one that just made it into the B tier is the Wizard. Now there's not much to say about the Wizard because it's super similar to the Mystic that we talked about just previously. It's just instead of an extremely annoying ability, you get a slightly less annoying one. At least in my eyes because spell bombing is hard. And not because I'm bad, because of something else. What spell bombing is, is the wizard ability on paper does insane damage if you hit all shots because it shoots like 20 shots in all directions from your cursor. At least that's what you think. And spell bombing is when you hit all of these 20 shots on a single enemy. But for some damn reason, the ability still fires on the center of the nearest tile to your cursor instead of directly on your cursor. So the damage on paper is rarely what you get in practice but it's still much better than Mystic. The extra damage that you can deal from a safe distance means that getting Soulbound is much easier, but you might need a higher tier spell against some enemies like Oryx to get Soulbound, since every shot from the spell is reduced by the enemy's defense. It's better than Mystic for DPS as well with the staff, starting at like 8th best damage going down to 12th best after like 20 defense, but it still has the horrible issue of being super immobile, super squishy, and a very low health regeneration, just like the Mystic, which is a horrible trifecta for new players. Now for a really different class, the Knight. So this class is super unique because it's the lowest range out of all of the classes on the tier list so far. Because it uses a sword as its weapon which has a range of 3.5 tiles for the tiered ones at least. And it's also the slowest class we've talked about so far. But the benefits definitely, maybe probably make up for it. First, it's actually the second highest damage class on this list. On paper at least, you have to be balls deep to make it a reality because of the low range. But the knight does make it easier because of a few points. Firstly, this class has the highest defense in the game because of the fact that it wields heavy armor and shields that also gives extra defense. 
and it has the highest health in the game, tied with the other melee classes. Also, the way that shields work is it's an ability that makes enemies unable to shoot. As long as you're close enough to the enemy, you press space, it generally shoots out a cone of shots, and those projectiles apply a stun on the enemy. It is really short range, so you have to go balls deep first, then land the stun, and then you can chain it if you like. But if you screw up, it could mean GG for your character. So yeah, this class can be a bit tough for new players, but it definitely doesn't get easier over the next class, that's for sure. Next, we have Kensei. I originally put this class super low on the list because it has the most complicated ability in the game. And by the time that you learn to use the ability pretty well, you'd be a mid-game player at least. But even if you use it slightly well, the ability is good, and it has so many other benefits on top of how strong the ability is for survivability and speed before you do learn it well. Firstly, it's the third tankiest option out of all classes. It uses heavy armor and the ability gives it extra base defense. It also has higher than average vitality and does roughly 20% more damage than samurai, even though that it still uses a katana. And it pierces, of course. And back to the ability, when you're not even playing perfectly, it's insane for new players because when you dash, you're invincible, and it can make some situations a lot easier. Even if you dash only a tile away, it gives you momentary invincibility, kind of like a dodge roll in Elden Ring, and you can also just spam it for damage. By holding your cursor slightly out and spamming space while tapping backwards, you barely move, and this actually does the most damage in practice out of all of the abilities mentioned so far, with 750 damage on the T4 sheep, and it has 8 range. And if you're ballsy enough, you can even dash over the enemy. The trail deals an additional 800 damage on top of the shooting shots. And on top of that, it also has a stacking attack multiplier effect of roughly 5% per stack up to roughly 25%. And if that wasn't enough, the class is extremely mana efficient, which suits new players so well because they don't get mana regen because of low stats and no pet. Because you get multiple dashes per ability use. Like for example, on the T4 sheaf, if you just press space once for 100 mana, you then get 3 dashes out of it, which you could be using to move the entire screen, or deal 4500 damage in total. But yeah, it is really really tough to use for beginners. It also does have that low katana range, and you are super slow if you can't use your ability for some reason, like if you're out of mana, otherwise you're zooming. Okay, that one was a bit complicated, now we're going back to easy mode with a basic one. At the 11th spot, we have an archer. Now we already talked about Huntress, and it makes this easy because there's little difference. It uses the same bow, which has that try shot issue where you have to be in really close with a lever armor to deal full damage, but can be fixed with the doom bow. It also has the low vitality issue, but the ability is so much better, holy shit. Instead of the lame mortar ability with a delayed effect, you get an instant firing out arrow, which deals around 50% more damage per mana spent. It has a range of 15 tiles, so you hit enemies off the screen. So like for example, when Oryx 2 is standing still, which is majority of the time, it's so easy for a new player to get soulbound. And it also pierces enemies, and maybe best of all, it paralyzes instead of slows, which helps lock enemies in place hitting your try shot easier, and it allows you to chain paralyze, which in early game is way better than slow. Quickly guys, I have to shout out my people for supporting me on the Rotom G grind, especially the subscribers on Twitch, the members on YouTube, and the patrons. It's thanks to you guys for keeping the channel alive. Consider checking out the tiers and the benefits on YouTube, Twitch, or Patreon to support me. Much love. Now here comes the great classes, because we're moving into the A tier, and yeah, majority of classes are up here because they received so many buffs, and the first one is, in 10th place, the Warrior. Warrior is another heavy armor class and ends up being the second tankiest class in the game because it uses heavy armor and helmets which give extra defense. It's also tied in first place for the highest HP. The class has extremely high vitality but is slow and short ranged without its ability. The low speed is made up for because of its ability because it gives it speedy on pressing spacebar. And the other shortfalls the class has, just like the knight, it's compensated by its insane damage which makes it come in at 
third place out of all classes. But it does increase its damage even further than that as well, because not only does the ability give speedy, it also gives berserk which increases attack speed by 25%. And when you do use your ability, it makes it deal more damage than all other classes with its regular attack. The ability is also super mana efficient and the class is so easy to play and learn. The only real challenge the class has is its range, which might be a bit rough for new players sometimes against harder enemies. In the ninth place now, we have the Bard. Bard is the final bow class on this list, and it's the one I'd recommend the most. That's why it's the highest on this list after all. Now that issue with hitting all shots with the bow can actually be the worst on Bard because it's a robe class instead of a leather class, meaning it's more squishy in general. Because robes do have like 50% less defense than levers in general, but this is made up for by quite a few things. The craziest one is that the Bard actually has the fourth highest damage as a class on this list, if you do hit all three shots. It also has a nice HP regen compared to other bow classes, around 50% more vitality, 31 against their 21. This class also makes up for its defense shortfall by giving itself defense with its ability. When you press space, it actually grants you some defense. It also does have some base defense on the ability as well without pressing space. On top of that, pressing space also gives you a buff called Inspire is nearby by 1.25 times for a short amount of time which makes it even safer to play. And yeah, if you do get a debur on this class, it makes it feel the best, because instead of having a range of seven tiles, it becomes closer to nine tiles, so you're sniping enemies from downtown. Bard also has another easy to access rare item. It's a loot that commonly drops from Snake Pit called the Snake Charmer Pungy. And what this one does, it provides you with seven base speed and a speedy buff when you do press spacebar, as well as keeping the defense buff, which makes it an awesome swap out for getting around. Now for the eighth slot, we have the Sorcerer. Sorcerer is definitely one of the best classes for endgame players since it's a rework, but it's great for beginners too. It does have the issue where it's a bit squishy since it's a robe user, and the damage with the wand is surprisingly low. It actually comes in at the second worst damage out of classes in the game with the same set. But this is well made up for by a few tricks the Sorcerer has. The Sorcerer has a nice ability that you can use at a safe range, which deals nice damage for its mana cost. Secondly, Sorcerer has crazy stats for some reason. It has the second highest sum of stats, and this is because of its wisdom, which is in first place, which allows you to spam your ability even more. And for some reason, it's got really high vitality on par with melees. And on top of that, for some reason, it has super high speed at 40. So this makes Sorcerer the highest vitality and speed robe class. So overall, the class feels pretty nice to use. You still get popped quickly because of the fact that you use a robe, but hopefully the vitality and speed helps you prevent that. This is the first wand class we're talking about. And unlike staves, this pierces through enemies and has a higher range of nine tiles, which is pretty crazy. But it only gets crazier with the next one on the list. Another wand class, we have the Summoner. For more experienced and late game players, Sorcerer is basically straight up better, especially with a better pet. For new players, it's completely the other way around. This is mostly due to the summoner's extremely mana efficient ability. The classes that we mentioned so far that do damage usually only inflict damage once when you press space. Like Sorcerer for example, which deals 300 damage with a T4 Scepter and it costs 70 mana, so it's about 4 damage per mana. But with the same tier mace, for 90 mana, you summon a fox that does around 150 damage per second for 11 seconds. It's exactly a total of 1,622 damage. So that's almost five times more damage per mana spent than the Scepter. And I know Scepter is AoE, but Maces also pierce, and you can have three summons at a time. It just feels way better when you don't have a pet to play Summoner. Summoner's base damage is also way higher than Sorcerer. It comes in at around fifth place out of all classes. And that doesn't even include the insane ability damage. It also shares the highest wisdom stats and mana stats with Sorcerer, which helps you keep up your summons for even longer. And if you want to go above and beyond even further, you can find an extremely underrated mace from the sprite world in a white bag, which does even more insane damage, especially to stationary enemies, 
The downside of Summoner is it does have that trifecta where it's immobile, it's squishy, and it has incredibly low vit, standard robe stuff, and the ability can be a bit annoying, like I don't like to use it really, because you have to hold down the toggle key and move the summons around, but for a beginner it is worth it. Now time for the third and last wand class in a row, the Priest. Now you might be already like, why the hell isn't this higher? This guy heals for an insane amount. You're definitely right, Priest does heal for crazy amounts, but that's basically all he does. It is amazing for making up for new player's mistakes. He is the only class that can gain health straight away after using its ability, and that is why the Priest is so high on this list. He also does have a great range as a one class and really high wisdom and speed, but that's where it all ends. The negatives are just so bad. Like for example, did you know Priest does the least damage out of any class by far? If you're ever solo with Priest, you'll be super miserable. Sure, you won't die, but the enemy will feel like it's not dying either. And yeah, since you're a robe class, you're super squishy, so if you make a severe enough of a mistake, the healing won't matter. Go a bit too far into an abyss, and boom, you're dead. Still, it's a good pick, but you really want to be playing with other players if you're playing on this class because of the lack of damage. As someone that likes to play solo more often, this class is just not for me. Okay, now we made it up to S tier, the OP classes for beginners, and the first one is Ninja. Now, you will be seeing enough movement with this class because it is the fastest class in the game hands down, at least if you have a bad pet. It does have the highest speed stat in the game, and when you hold down space you get a speedy buff on top of that, but to be fair the speed of ninja doesn't help new players that much on top of just getting around, but there's much better points for the ninja being this high on this list. So ninja ranks around the fifth highest damage class, far higher than other katana classes. And though it's got the short range of a katana, it still is piercing for clearing groups of enemies, but if you want to do more single target damage, by simply pressing space or letting go of space, you shoot out a star. And this star is pretty busted now, because it recently got buffed to do way more damage. Like for example, the T4 star, which costs 70 mana, deals 900 damage on average to a single target. And that's not even the craziest part. For some reason, it has 15 range, meaning that you hit enemies that you can't even see off your screen. Making hitting soulbound on enemies like Oryx and events super trivial. On top of all this, he has the highest vitality in the game, which is even further increased by the vit stats the stars give. Like for example, the T4 star gives 6 extra vitality. And fun fact, but Ninja is the only class in the game to have over 200 total stats at level 20 on average, which is the highest in the game. Okay, now we have a weird class. I wasn't sure where to put this because it's super unique and it's super underrated for end game and early game. It's the Assassin. Many people assume this might not be a great beginner class because it seems very mana costly. It is a class that you want to be spamming your ability for damage, but even with the low mana regen that a new player might have, the ability is just so good. There is no other class in the game that you'll have such an easy time hitting soulbound on enemies. This is because when you hit space, a potion will be lobbed. Even if there's enemies in the way, it flies over, hitting the enemy, and it even hits enemies through invincibility, as long as you first apply it before they become invincible. And because soulbound damage in the game is really low now, you really don't have to hit them with many poisons. So you can play like a chicken and get all the loot. Even in the OG days, Assassin was seen as the most free class for getting soulbound on things like Oryx 2, and it was so much worse then. It's since gone through a rework where the damage from poison is inflicted faster, and on top of that, while the enemy is poisoned, you gain extra damage, which is signalled by like the green glow that it has. The only downside is that the main attack alone doesn't do great damage. It does rank in at like the fourth lowest damage because dagger moment, but I think it's worth it, man. Speaking of dagger moments, next up in third place we have the Rogue. So yeah, this is a dagger class, so the damage isn't that great. It actually comes in at the fifth least damage, slightly above Assassin, but the ability is just so underrated in early and end game, it's insane. With a press of one button, as long as no one is behind you, and the enemy is in a targeting phase, which is roughly three quarters of all phases in the game if I had to guess, you're basically invincible, because if you're not being shot at, how are you supposed to take damage? Even the boss, which was once seen as the epitome of endgame, Oryx 3, is made into a bumbling buffoon if you go invisible when you're solo, because most of his phases are chase phases and he just stands still and sometimes doesn't shoot. The ability is also so mana efficient. 
you can stay invisible for so long before running out of mana. I probably wouldn't have ranked this class so high if it wasn't for the wonders that it did for me when I was a beginner. Bit of a backstory of mine, my first ever character that died was on another account, which was a wizard that died before level 20 to Lich. Then the second ever character that died was a wizard that got to 1H, I forgot what it died to. And then the very next character I had my third character, holy shit. I lived for so long and was able to do all content, including the end game, which was Tomb at the time, without dying for so long that it allowed me to get the best in slot dagger at the time, which was the F right dagger. I also got a skin for myself and an unbound health pot. All of those were so expensive. It didn't get to 8 8 because I was choosing to buy all these silly items, but I could have easily, instead of buying the skin, finished my 8 8 character. It ended up getting 6 8. But otherwise, this was a best in slot character with an extra cosmetic as well that was super expensive. And the way that I died was so lame as well, it wouldn't have happened. But how it happened was I was still playing Realm in my browser at the time when the game was on Flash. I accidentally pressed off my game onto the side of the browser and I pressed space trying to use my ability while I was rushing through Godlands, and my whole tab just scrolled down. And by the time I scrolled back up, my character was dead. So yeah, I think I could have easily got an 8-8, even with my skin and stuff, if I just lived for a bit longer, because I shouldn't have died. But Rogue was just so free for me, especially since I loved playing solo. And if you do love playing solo, I strongly recommend this class among all others. But if you do play with some other players, you do always want to make sure that no one is behind you if you're invisible, because then it's just useless, and then you can get jebated, and then you can get popped, which doesn't feel so nice. Now we're down to two left, and the second best beginner class, in my opinion, is Paladin. Now I never wanted to put a melee character this high. I didn't think a melee class's benefits could justify its short range, for a beginner at least, but trust me, it definitely does. This class is worth it. It has the highest damage in the game, which can be even further increased with the seal, which gives you a damaging buff. And that rockets you way further past any class in the game in terms of damage with the main attack. And the seal also has the added benefit of healing, which will roughly heal you for one health per mana you spend because the seal gives you a healing buff for a couple of seconds. How healing works is it gives you 20 health per second, which gets even stronger when you do have 50 wisdom because of a mechanic called whiz mod, where at a point of wisdom stat, some classes abilities just jump in power. And this is a super mana efficient ability too. At full mana, you'll be able to use the T4 seal three times, healing you for 240 health. And usually when a class has this high healing, it's balanced by having lower vitality. Like for example, that's what the priest has. But for some reason, this one just has close to the highest vitality as well. Granted, this class isn't as tanky as the other melees because the ability doesn't give base defense, like the helmet and the shield does. It instead gives passive decks. But yeah, I'd say good luck dying. I feel like this class would be easier to survive on than the other classes and it also shares the highest HP amount with the other melee classes. Okay, drum roll please, the last, the very best class for beginners, in my opinion at least, it is the Necromancer. Man, think about some of the classes we've talked about and how crazy their healing is. Well, this class just puts them in the dumpster, in terms of healing at least. This class is also a staff and a robe user, and it has an ability similar to a wizard. Instead of the spell bomb, you instead get a like a radial effect on your cursor that instantly does damage in a circle around your cursor, and it heals for every enemy that it hits. Now, if you're a late game player, you're often just fighting one enemy, which is a boss, but early game is so dense with mobs. If you look around everywhere, there's just enemies everywhere. They're usually not very strong, but the great thing about that for Necromancer is basically wherever you point, it's pretty easy to get four enemies within the radius, and you won't believe how much it heals. Now the ability does heal higher for the higher tier skull that you use, but for example the tier 4 ability heals you a whopping 100 health per enemy. So it wouldn't be rare to be able to heal yourself from one health point to full. Skulls are also an ability that are the only ones to give you base health just by simply wearing them. One of the downsides is the ability doesn't do that crazy damage. Like for example, that T4 ability would do a measly 230 damage for the 100 mana spent, but it's the healing that just makes it so crazy. And the staff does do good damage. It does on par damage with wizard. I gave it one extra dex on the graph so that you can see it is in a different place. 
but it does do the same damage. And this class does have the highest wisdom and mana, so it will be tough to not have a heal ready if needed. It's basically a priest but better. So guys, that's it for the list. Let me know if you hate me now because of our differing opinions. Comment what your picks for the best new player classes would be down below, or if you think that I'm right for once. If you enjoyed the video, it might be worth checking out this dungeon ranking tier list on the screen now. It teaches you which dungeons will make you the most rich from the least effort required possible. Also join the Discord. Peace.